Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course uh, Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Now in the last lecture I tried to explain that uh, the heterogeneous reaction kinetics and I told you when, uh, when we immobilize the enzyme on the solid matrix and since your substrate remain in the liquid phase, so it is an example of the heterogeneous system. And the heterogeneous system, the major problem that we face that is the diffusion problem and also we have we have uh, reactions uh, re then uh, the substrate has to diffuse from the bulk to the surface of the solid matrix then and only then it will react with the enzyme and give the product and product has to diffuse from the substrate this on the surface of the solid matrix to the bulk of the liquid so you know that uh, that diffusion problem is there so there are two type of diffusion we come across came across one is called external mass transfer uh, problem another is the internal mass transfer problem. Now, external mass transfer problem means when we assume the enzymes are immobilized on the surface of the solid matrix. So, it is not going inside the solid matrix. So, just at the at the at the surface of the solid matrix, the how we can explain that particular situation and we have come across the steady state condition where rate of mass transfer equal to rate of reactions and we try to find out the uh, correlation between um, uh, damp cooler number and effectiveness factor. Damp cooler number I told you it is the ratio between the maximum velocity of reaction divided by maximum rate of mass transfer and the effectiveness factor is the rate of reaction, the actual rate of reaction divided by rate of reaction when there is no mass transfer limitation. So, uh, so then in case of interparticular uh, diffusion problem that we have come across that you know when a particle present inside the pore how that can be explained. We have come across the effectiveness factor and diacyl modulus and uh, we try to find out under uh, what circumstances again it, uh, it follows uh, it, uh, it tends to uh, the homogeneous reaction when eta value equal to 0 that is how, uh, that is the effectiveness factor is 0 how thai modulus. Um, that plays important role in the intermolecular diffusion problems. Now, uh, this particular lecture, we try to uh, solve some numerical problems and uh, to have the better idea on the immobilized uh, enzyme system. The first thing that I want to show you, that you know, and the, this first problem is the baby hamster kidney cell was immobilized in alginate bit. I told you the alginate bit that uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the previous uh, lectures, the how the alginate bit formation take place. We know the sodium alginate that is the soluble material. Now, we what we can do, we can uh, this cell, we can make a suspension in the in the that uh, sodium alginate. Then drop by drop if you put in the calcium chloride solution, then alginate bit formation is there. Then what will happen? Your cells will entrap inside the solid matrix that you can you can have. So, this is exactly what here the, mm, the baby hamster kidney cell are immobilized in the alginate bit. The average particle diameter is 5 millimeter. The particle diameter means the size of the particle. This is equal to what we call it, this is equal to 5 millimeter. Okay. The rate of oxygen consumption at the bulk concentration, this is 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg per oxygen per cubic meter is this. The, this is the uh, uh, this is the bulk concentration and the this is the consumption rate. This is uh, per unit time what is the consumption rate. The effective diffusivity of oxygen in the bid is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter square per second. Assume that oxygen concentration at the surface of the catalyst is equal to the, the bulk concentration. The oxygen uptake follows the zero order kinetics. 
So, uh, then you have to find out are the internal mass transfer effect is significant. So, this is uh, purely a, a mass transfer related problem and uh, this is the heterogeneous system. So, uh, uh, let us see how we can solve it. Um, So, uh, to access the internal mass transfer, the we have we already know the observable thigh modulus, this equation we have already seen, this is the thigh modulus, thigh modulus equal to r square uh, is the diameter, this is the uh, and the, uh, the by 3 whole square, the minus over that is the here the uh, previously we to, uh, told about the rate of reaction, this is the rate of oxygen transfer. Uh, that is the observed and this is the diffusivity and this is the substrate concentration. Now, in this in this problem, if you look at uh, the previously that you know how what is R? Question is that what is R? What is R is the that is the this is the average particle diameter is about 5 millimeter, am I right? Now, if it is 5 millimeter, then how you can 5 millimeter how you can write? You can write about this is 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. What is meter? 1 meter is how much? 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Am I right? And the, what is the millimeter? This is 100,000 to 1000 millimeter. Am I right? So, 1 by that is why it is 10 to the power minus 3. So, di this is the radius. Radius will be what? Divided by 2. So, it has come like this. Now, if you put this value, this all values are there, that is equal to 3.88. Now, what we have observed that in the table, that in the, the last lecture I have shown you, that if the thigh modulus is more than, more than, uh, more than uh, 3, then it is mass transfer limitation problem that we have in the, in the, in the, in the system. So, that is exactly we have written from wise criteria that if phi is greater than 3, the internal mass transfer effect is significant. So, this problem is very simple, only whatever data is there, we just put in this equation, then try to find out the thigh modulus and if you find out thigh modulus, from that we can speculate whether how, what is the, if it is less than uh, 3, then we can, we can, we may think little bit different. Uh, 0.3, then uh, it may be uh, mass transfer problem will be less, then reaction uh, problem will be there. But since it is more than um, 3, we it clearly indicate this is this is uh, 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 mass transfer that limitation problem will be significant. Now, let me go to the second problem. Second problem is what? Second problem is the enzyme is immobilized in 8 millimeter diameter agarose bit and I at a concentration of 0 0.018 kg protein per cubic meter gel. 10 bits are immersed in the well mixed solution containing 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg per cubic meter of substrate. So, this is the substrate concentration that we have. The effective diffusivity of the substrate in in agarose gel is 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 9 square meter per second. The kinetics of the enzyme can be approximated by the first order with the specific rate of constant of 3.11 into 10 to the power 5 second inverse per kg protein. Deduce the type of li limiting region that uh, the whether it is a mass transfer limiting region or it is a reaction uh, rate of reaction controlling that we shall have to find out from this particular uh, data that we shall have to calculate. Now, now what is given here? This is here um, the R, the size of the particle is given. This is Eight millimeter. Am I right? This is the diameter of the bead. Eight millimeter means the radius will be. Again, I showed you before also how it is the millimeter can be converted into meter. Then it will be four into ten to the power minus three. What is the diffusivity that we have 
here diffusivity is given here, am I right? So, we can write diffusivity. In the absence of external mass transfer, the S b will be S b equal to S b of what is the what is the substrate concentration that we have uh, that uh, this is the substrate concentration 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg per cubic meter. Now, volume of the bit, how we can calculate the volume of the bit? We know the size because the word the we have already reported the size is 4 into 10 to the radius is 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 uh, meter. Am I right? Then um, uh, volume of the is uh, 4 by 3 pi r cubed. So, this is uh, this is exactly this is the we, we consider this the spherical particle. So, it is the, if we consider spherical particle, we can find out easily the volume of this and there and 10 bits we have taken into consideration. So, if you multiply by 10, it will be 2.68 into 10 to the power minus 6 cubic meter. And the amount of enzyme present is the how much is there? This is this is the 2 point this, this is this is the per cubic meter, this is the concentration of the enzyme. So, if you multiply that, we will get the how much kg of enzyme present. The k k the rate constant. If you look at the rate constant is what that you know that in this uh, kinetics of the uh, approximate the specific rate is three point one one into ten to the power five per second. Uh, per kg protein, per kg protein. So, we, we calculated the amount of protein. In this problem, we calculate the amount of protein. So, you have to multiply this amount of protein that is present there. Then, we we, we get the k value and k value is coming about uh, <coughs> that uh, point zero one five second inverse. And what is the kinetics of this? This kind of this, this follows the first order kinetics, the uh, this k into S b. Now, again we know that thi modulus is, is this, that the pi equal to V p by A p square into minus R s observed D E s into S b. Now, if you put these values here, the how much values we are getting? The 12.69. Now, 12.69 the, the wise criteria that we have, if phi value is more than 3, the diffusion limiting region is there. So, it is very clear that this problem is diffusion controlling because this is not reaction controlling for the, the so this problem also like in the previous problem we have, we can conclude this is also that uh, that uh, that uh, mass transfer controlling Now, this is uh, the one problem that we have. Now, let me explain this problem. The, the problem is like this, because I told you that uh, that you know that uh, that one of the uh, one of the uh, major application of the immobilized enzyme system in the western country is the high fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup production. So, what we what we do here as you know corn, what, what, what is content? It contains starchy material, am I right? Starch. So, when it undergoes the saccharification process, this produces glucose. Now, this glucose, when we pass through this immobilized column, this is the immobilized column, what is content? The immobilized glucose isomerase enzyme, glucose isomerase. So, if we, if we, this is this is so you are passing glucose here and you are producing fructose. Am I right? This is how it is produced. 
So, this is used for the production of high fructose corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup largely used in the confectionery industry in the western country. Largely it is used to that you know as a sweetening agent in the western country. Our country we do not use much, but the western country is a lot of applications that we have. Now, this problem this is related with this problem that you know particular issue. The if you pass this glucose solution in this column and convert it to fructose, now question come that uh, what for a desired conversion, what is the should be the height of the column? This is how we can design, how we can design the column that what should be the height, uh, this, 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 the different height you have to you have to find out that what size is there in the column. So, this problem is very interesting, so you try to understand. So, uh, what is the what is here that uh, you see that uh, the glucose is converted to fructose by using immobilized glucose isomerase enzyme. This you can correct it. This is S, you know, that uh, isomerase enzyme. The find out the height of the immobilized enzyme column. Following data are given. The diameter of the column is so when you when you say that this column, so this column. The diameter, this is this diameter is about 5 centimeter, am I right? 5 centimeter. And the particle size is 30 to 40 mes. What do you mean by 30 to 40 mes? Mes means what? Mes approximately the 30 mes means approximately, not exactly, approximately this is the pore size should be 1 by 30 inch. Now 40 mes means is approximately 1 by pore size should be 1 by 40 means and then that, that means what suppose you have this in the sieving plates and you have you have here 30 mes and here 40 mes am I right. Now, when you pass your particle here the it will pass through 30 and return by 40. So, the your particle size lies between between 30 mes to 40 mes because you pass through 30 and return by 40. So, that is the 1 by 40 means smaller size. So, this is how the industrially how the particle size can be expressed the 3 by 40 mes. Now, this is the approximately ap equal to 0 0.71 millimeter average diameter which we express as dp. Now, feed rate by here you are continuously passing the liquid there is the feed rate you are passing liquid this is about 500 milliliter per hour am I right and glucose concentration as 60. So, this is operated as 60 degree centigrade because and the glucose concentration here is about 50 grams per liter. So, S 0 you can consider 50 500 gram per liter am I right. Now, glucose conversion efficiency that means 60 percent of glucose will be should be converted into the into the fructose here in the product. So, so that you can we can easily find out and what is the viscosity of the liquid 3.6 centipoise as 60 degree centigrade and the feed density is 1.23 gram per liter as 60 degree centigrade and substrate diffusivity d equal to 0.21 into 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter square per second at 60 degree centigrade and void fraction is point. 3, 5. Now, what do you mean by void fraction? Void fraction means suppose that you know that uh, this is the particle am I right? This is the particle uh, that you know we fix in the column this is particle they are lying with each other uh, due to the gravitational force of interaction. When, now, when you pass your substrate, substrate is the liquid form it always pass through to the void space. Now, it cannot penetrate the solid matrix but whatever the void space is there it will go like this am I right. So, liquid is moving only through the void space like this. So, that is that is the void fraction that is 30 percent of the of this solid matrix will be free space void fraction means it is considered as a free space. So, that where where the liquid can travel you know free space where the liquid can travel. So, that is I have a 0.35. So, these are the different parameters are given. 
Now let us see how we can solve this. Now, now for this we will be using one equation that is uh, Satter field has suggested the expression for the column height as follows. The he, that you know this scientist he determined that uh, kind of correlation with the mm, the flow characteristics of the fluid with the with the that size uh, the height of the column. And during uh, the, his uh, research work, he find out this is quite applicable for the determining the height of the immobilized column. Now, what he says that is the z z is the height of the column equal to epsilon. Epsilon is what this is the void space, and R is the Reynolds number. This is the um, S C is the Smith number, and A B is the that uh, that uh, ratio of particle surface area to volume. And uh, and y one and y two is called mole fraction of substrate in product. That means y two is the mole fraction because if you have column like this, so you are passing your substrate like this, product like this. So here the mole fraction of the substrate is y one and here y two and here y one. So y not so this is the input. Input is this is the feed. Is y one is the mole fraction of the substrate, and mole fraction of the substrate at the product that here it is y two. This is what he has. So this is the correlation that we have. Let us see how we can solve it. Now first we shall have to find out the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is the what du rho by mu because we know that that is the Reynolds number. Is R e equal to this is d u rho by mu. This is the d is the usually the diameter of the particles and uh, mu u is the velocity of the liquid. Rho is the density uh, the uh, rho, and rho is the density of the liquid and mu is the viscosity of the liquid. Now here the v is the here here d t uh, by uh, the, that v into rho by v where v is the Volumetric feed rate. This is the velocity divide the cross-sectional area of the column. So suppose this is the column, and we are passing the liquid with a some flow rate. And uh, how we can find out the velocity? Velocity here. Velocity is v. They are saying, and v will be equal to what? The flow rate divided by cross-sectional area. Because whatever what is the cross-sectional area of the cylindrical column? Is the pi r squared. Pi r square is the uh, is the, the cross section area, so we can find out the velocity. So this is how we can volumetric flow rate is this that. Uh, the, but when when we do all this calculation, one thing we shall have to remember the unit. The we have seen the different units there, and there uh, that unit the same units we shall have to. So that is why the flow rate is given 500 milliliter per hour. This is to be converted into milliliter per second, like this. Now, <coughs> that cross-sectional area of the column, how you can calculate that? Uh, the cross-sectional area diameter is about uh, 2.5 uh, uh, centimeter. Am I right? So, now the 5 centimeter. Now, if diameter is 5 centimeter, what will be the radius? Radius will be 5 by 2. That is 2.5 centimeter. Am I right? So this is exactly what he has written. The pi r square. I told you that is the cross section. And uh, so what will be the velocity? Velocity is equal to that. Uh, this is the flow rate 1.138 milliliter per second, and this is the area. Then this will be the centimeter. What is the milliliter? Milliliter means centimeter cubed. Am I right? That so this is centimeter squared and this is centimeter. So you square will calculate it will be centimeter. So it is centimeter per second. What is the Reynolds number? Reynolds number that we already we have given the d uh, u rho that uh, by mu that d is the diameter of the uh, that vessel that we have and that uh, u is the is the velocity of the and and this is the the density and this is the viscosity and this value is coming this and if you if you the smith number that we get the mu by d into rho now this d is not the diameter this is the diffusivity 
and uh, this diffusivity that has been given in this problem is 0 0.21 into 10 to the power minus 5. This is uh, the mu is equal to 3.5, this is equal to this and so Smith number is coming about 1.3 9 uh, 37 into 10 to the power 6. So, this speed number we can easily calculate. Now, if you if you uh, then we shall have to find out another parameter what is A b. What is A b equal to surface area of the particle uh, divided by volume of the particle. Now, what is the surface area of the particle? This is uh, 4 pi r square am I right and this is 4 by 3 pi r cube this is the volume of the, sp the spherical particle. So, this value is coming around 84.5 centimeter per centimeter. Now, uh, and mole fraction this is how you can calculate mole fraction in case of uh, that you know that, uh, that uh, this is the column and uh, here this is the input liquid am I right? This is the y 1 and this is the output is the y 2. The mole fraction of substrate because we consider all substrate are present there in the form of glucose. So, this should be 1 and in, in the in the outgoing section 60 percent is converted that means, how much will remain by this 40. So, mole fraction will be of the substrate will be 0 0.4. So, now if we have all the all the data so we have and we put the value in this equation, then we will find the, 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 the height of the column will come around 2.2889 centimeter. So, this is uh, how we can we can find out the height of the column, we can easily uh, of the immobilized system we can easily find out the. So, uh, so in this particular uh, uh, lecture we uh, we try to cover uh, some kind of numerical problems because we uh, first uh, we we find out that uh, when you use some kind of uh, cells and that cells undergo respiration that how much oxygen uh, the uptake by the cells is there that diffusion problem and we try to find out whether it is diffusion control and another we try to find out that in case of enzymatic reaction uh, whether that is that is the diffusion control that uh, we try to find out and uh, whether it is diffusion control and reaction uh, reaction rate control. And finally, we try to find out that the industrially when we apply this immobilized uh, enzyme system, we put the enzyme in a column and continuously we produce a uh, product. So, the question comes for getting a desired amount of substrate conversion, how we can determine the height of the column. So, I, I, I try to explain one problem related to that, I hope you understand that how it related uh, to the flow characteristics of the fluid, we use the Reynolds number and Smith number with this try to evaluate the volume of the, uh, of the immobilized column. Thank you very much.